In the chapter on cameras, we saw why it was important to use the gimbal coordinate system and how to set up the axis order for rotational priority. Now we need to revisit that. Anytime we build a hierarchy, we need to make sure that we set up the axis order in order to get predictable rotations, and we always animate in gimbal coordinates. If I select one of the objects, like the shoulder, with the rotate tool active, we can see that the pivot point is aligned with the shoulder geometry. Well, let's go deeper. I'll right click on the rotate tool to get the rotate transform type in dialog. And if I rotate the object in its local coordinates around, for example, the x axis, we see these absolute values remain at zero at all times. Okay, I'll undo that. The fact that those local values are always zero can be a bit unsettling at first, but it makes sense if you think about it, because the object is always going to be rotated zero degrees relative to itself. It can be rotated in some angular value relative to something else, and that is usually its parent. When we rotate in local mode, we're offsetting the rotations according to a point of reference, which just happens to be the pivot point of the object. But that's not necessarily the orientation of the animation channels that drive the rotation. So without getting too technical, if we just switch over to a different reference coordinate system, such as world, then we'll see something else happen. Let's say I rotate around the world x-axis. Now we're seeing the absolute values of all three axes are changing. Although it looks like I'm only rotating around one axis, in reality, under the hood of Max, all of the rotation channels are being adjusted. And this can be problematic because in this situation, you won't be able to control your animation, and objects can spin wildly out of control and you won't know why. And it's because you're not actually rotating what you think you're rotating. It looks like you're rotating around X, but in reality, you could be rotating around two or three axes. And this will happen whether you're in world mode or local mode or any mode other than gimbal. So I'll undo those rotations with Control Z and go back to where I was. Switch over to gimbal reference coordinate system. And now if I rotate around gimbal X, we'll see that only one axis is changing in the transform type in dialog. All right, I'll undo that as well. Gimbal mode is very important for animation. You'll notice that although only one axis updates in the angular values, the rotation axes themselves can move relative to one another. If I rotate around gimbal Y, I'm changing the orientation of the axes relative to one another. I'll undo that again with Control Z. That is an indicator that there is an internal hierarchy to the rotation axes. Some of those axes follow others in an order of operations. It's not a chronological order. It all happens simultaneously. It's just an order of calculations. And we can optimize that so that we can control the rotations for a particular object, such as a shoulder joint. You'll need to experiment with a rotation order to find out which one is best for a particular situation and change the rotation order. That's done in the motion panel. Click on the motion panel. In the PRS parameters, choose Rotation, and under Euler parameters, we can change the axis order. As I said, you'll need to experiment, but I've done so already, and I established the appropriate axis order in this case. I want to make sure that it behaves like a natural shoulder. And the best rotation order for that is ZXY. So I'll change this over to ZXY. And it did cause the object to rotate a little bit, but I can fix that easily. I'll just re-enable angle snaps, go over to the front view, right-click in that view, and rotate that a little bit around the y-axis, 10 degrees. And now we've just restored the rotation of that object relative to the rest of the character. Okay, I'll disable angle snaps once again, just to illustrate that we've now optimized the rotation order. Go over to the perspective view, maybe get in a little bit closer, control, alt, and middle mouse. If I rotate around X, we'll see that the Z axis follows. So the blue Z circle is rotating as well. Well, the Z axis is not very important in a shoulder. And in fact, human beings have very little degree of freedom in that Z axis. We can twist a shoulder a little bit 
but not very much, and that's why it should be the least important of the axes. I'll undo that rotation with Control Z. And if we rotate it around the Y axis, we will see that the X and Z axes both follow. That is what I want, because I want to then be able to swing that X axis forward. All right, I'll undo those rotations. I set this up so that the most important axis is Y, and then X is the next one in the priority, followed by Z as the last and least most important axis. Undo all those rotations. Just remember that in the axis order listing here, the order is reversed. So Y is the most important, and Z is the least important. We need to repeat that process for all of the other rotating objects, figure out what their optimal axis order is, and set that axis order before building any links. That's how to use gimbal rotation mode and set the axis order for the optimal priority of rotations.